What's good, everybody? My name is Mr. Peters. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to multiply polynomials and exponents. So in our first example, guys, it's asking us to find the product of x plus 2 times 3x minus 1. Now, the reason why I love the box method so much is because it gives a great visual. So what we have to understand is this when we set it up. Whatever is in parentheses, we have to keep it together. And what I mean by that is x plus 2 has to stay on, stay together, and 3x minus 1 has to stay together. So when I put 3x minus 1 on top, right, this is what I mean. We can't put 3x and then replace negative 1 with positive 2 or x. No, have to keep, keep it in the same parentheses with the same term. And I switch colors so you guys could understand what I mean. So now after we do this, guys, properties of exponents plays a big role. So we multiply, right? X times 3X gives us 3X to the second power. X times negative 1 is just negative X. 3X times 2 gives us 6X. And in our last box, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Now when we use the box method, I always tell students, hey, those diagonal terms will always be like terms with each other. So those are the only two terms that are possibly going to change because we'll add or subtract them. So when I write this in standard form, meaning I start with the highest exponent first, we're going to start off with 3x squared, right? And then once we subtract x from 6x, we'll have plus 5x, and then negative 2 stays the same. And this will be our answer or the product after we multiply x plus 2 and 3x plus 1. Now, in our next example, they want us to find the product of y plus 3 and y squared minus 2y plus 2. Now, for some reason, sometimes when students use the box method, they get a little bit confused with how to line it up. And I want you guys to know that the same thing applies. So the way I drew my boxes was I have three boxes here, two on the side, right? Three by two. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep y squared, negative 2y, and 2 on top. And then to the left, we're going to put that y plus 3. Now we're going to go through and we're going to multiply. And once we do that, we're going to get y squared. Well, I'm sorry, not y squared. y squared times y. So even though we don't see an exponent, guys, just remember that that y by itself has an exponent of 1. So I was rushing. This is actually going to be y to the third, right? Because y squared times y, right? That's three y's, y to the third. So now we have y to the third minus 2y squared minus 2y. So we, we multiplied y by all those three terms. Now we're going to go back and do the same thing for 3. So we'll get 3y to the second power, negative 6y, and we'll get 6. And even though it doesn't seem like it, guys, those diagonal terms, it still follows that like terms rule, right? So here goes our first set of like terms. And then here goes our second set of like terms. So as you can see, y to the third is going to stay the same, and that 6 is going to stay the same. So for writing this off in standard form, our final answer would be y to the third power plus y squared, right? Because 3y minus 2y, it's just y squared, right? Well, now, when we get to 6y and negative 2y, please understand, and I actually have this wrong. This should be positive, so let's make a correction. This should be positive, right? So we have a positive 2y, right? And we're adding a negative 6y with it. So this is going to give us negative 4y, and then we're going to have plus 6 at the end. And if you guys see, we're in standard form. We go from the highest exponent, and we're going all the way down in order until there is no exponent at all. So just remember, standard form, highest exponent, 
and we're going from greatest to least in order, okay? All right, so we're going to go on to our last problem, and I really want to show you guys this very special trick and something that you have to pay attention to when you're multiplying polynomials, all right? So our last problem, we're probably going to have two different boxes, right? We're going to multiply twice, and this is why. So it tells us to solve this problem. We have a minus 5 squared minus 3 times a plus 8. Now, what a lot of students like to do is just to go through and say, okay, this is a squared minus, I mean, plus 25, right? They just square both terms. Unfortunately, that is wrong. What they're saying right here is they want you to take this a to the 5, a minus 5, and they want you to multiply it by itself. So this is what it should look like. And that, that is why I drew out one of our boxes to use when we multiply. So we'll go back to blue. We have a negative 5 on top and then a and negative 5 on the side. So now we took it to the second power, meaning we're multiplying a minus 5 by a minus 5. And it's written two times, right? So now we go through, we multiply. A times A gives us A squared. We have minus 5A, minus 5A again when we multiply negative 5 and A, and then plus 25, right? We look at our like terms. We see that we do have like terms, right? All right. So we're going to write this now in standard form. So we have A squared minus 10A plus 25. But please understand, guys, this is just the first part of the problem, right? That's a minus 5 squared. Now we need to go to the second problem and multiply negative 3 by a plus 8. Then we could finish solving. So we scroll on down, right? And I'm going to switch to a different color now again. We have negative 3 on the side, right? Because we're taking this number and we're multiplying by a and 8. So I have a on top, 8 on top. So we have negative 3a, once we multiply negative 3 and a, and negative 24, once we multiply 3 and 8. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm just going to write this out to the right under. So we have negative 3a minus 24, right? So we multiply both of them, and it's telling us that we're going to subtract the product, right, the answer of, 3 times a plus 8 from a minus 5 squared. So what does that all mean in, in simple terms? I'm going to take what's in blue, and let's switch to a different color, and we're going to write it first, a squared minus 10a plus 25, and then now we're going to drop this second box right behind it, and then we're going to add and subtract. All right, so this is our final stage now. So I made it all into one expression, and now I'm going to combine my like terms. So a squared, no like term, it stays the same. Now we're going to go through and we're going to add negative 10a and negative 3a. Once we do that, we'll have minus 13a, and then, oops, I made a mistake, guys. That last number should be 24. Now, in our last step, we're going to look and we're going to do positive 25 and we're going to subtract 24 from it. So our final answer should be a squared minus 13a plus 1. So when you guys are multiplying polynomials using the box method, please remember these very important tips, guys. Make sure that what's ever grouped together in parentheses stays together when you're multiplying, right? Two, make sure that you add your like terms um, after you multiply within the box. And three, if you see an exponent, right, outside of the parentheses, don't just square what's inside. Expand the binomial, right? Write it out two times or three times, depending on what's on the exponent, then you can multiply and combine your like terms. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. This is Al Jerome with Mr. Peters. If you found this video helpful, 
Uh, we ask that you smash the like button, leave any comments for videos you'd like to see in the future. And we want to tell you guys, thank you so much for joining us today.